Hi, and welcome back to Module 3 of Accentuate the Beat. This module, Feel the Vibe or Not, we're going to look at consonant sounds. Now, there are 24 consonant sounds in spoken English that we're going to concern ourselves with in this module. If you were performing Shakespearean English on the globe stage, I would add another two consonant sounds. But for transatlantic English and for your average spoken English anywhere in the world, these 24 consonant sounds will serve you very, very well. Now, before we begin, let's, before we begin on the consonant sounds, let's go back for a second and review vowel sounds. You'll remember that vowel sounds are actually created by the unobstructed flow of air. They are made by the breath, the air coming from the diaphragm up across the vocal cords and coming out unobstructedly through the mouth. And the, the sound of the vowel is determined by the shape of the mouth, whether the lips be fully rounded, as in oo, or very tight, as in e, or some variation of the relative sounds in before, a, uh, e, uh, all the way to the very relaxed i and the schwa. Remember, as unstressed as the i and the e are, they play a very important part in the stress of our vowels because they do, in fact, provide a beat. Just to refresh your memory, too, there are three notes commonly used throughout the English language. Let me say it, three stress patterns, if you will, three pitch tones, if you will primary stress, secondary stress, and unstressed. That's basically the vowels. We've talked about the vowels carrying the music, the melody of the language. Let's, for this module, consider the consonants as kind of the percussion. They frame the beautiful musicality of the vowels. Now, you see, consonants are made, why do I say that? Because consonants are made by the obstruction of the flow of air. You see, whether we use the teeth as in v or the tongue as in th or th or the lips as in m, mm, we use some part, what we call the articulators, to in fact interfere with that flow of sound. And it is that way that vowels or uh, consonants are actually articulated. Now, consonants are classified according to three categories. And this is really important for you to understand this. The first category is whether they are voiced or voiceless. The second is where in the mouth they are made. And once we have determined that, we go to the third point, which is how. How do we use these organs of articulation to help us make those sounds? So let's look at the first and perhaps the most important part is the differentiation between what we call the voiceless consonants and the voiced consonants. Now, some of you may know well what that means already and some of you may never have heard that before. So here's a little test just to teach you. Put your hand on your throat right here and make the sound of a snake, the S sound. And do you feel anything at all in the throat in here. If you're not certain, compare it to this sound, which most of the world calls the Z sound, but the American English is, calls it the Z sound. Let's make the Z sound. Z and tell me, what do you feel? Z. Z. If you said that in the Z or Z sound, you feel vibration in the throat area as well as the tongue, whereas you feel none of that vibration in this S sound, then you would be correct. Because you see, the S is called a voiceless sound. And the Z is a voiced sound. Because you can feel that Z, the voiced sound, actually takes more involvement of the muscles in here to help the vocal cords create that sound. It takes a little bit more involvement. Just as we learned in vowels, the complex vowel sounds or the diphthong sounds are more complex. They take more movement to make. It is the same with the voiced consonants. 
Now, dear students, this becomes very, very important that you know the difference between the voiceless consonants and the voiced consonants as we progress through this course. It's going to be something that you hear me refer to constantly. So that's the first category. The second category of how we categorize consonants is where in the mouth, in the face, in the throat do we make those sounds? And these are called the organs of articulation. They're also called the articulators. For this course, we're going to be taking a look at what I consider to be the seven major points of articulation. Now, there may be some people who would disagree with me, but I like to simplify everything. We are not training linguists here or speech pathologists. I just want you to be able to make the sounds of the English language so that you can speak to be heard. Now, the seven main articulators that we're going to look at here are the lips, as in p or b. It's the lips b, that help us make that sound. Or the tongue, as we use the tongue in th, as in thing, or th, as in they. The jaw, the way in which we move the jaw and we hold the jaw, j, the very j, word jaw tells you, gives you that feeling of the j, the jaw being involved. The gum ridge, that place just behind the top front teeth, which is where you make the t or the d sound from. The glottis, way down here in the throat, where the k and the g comes from. And of course, the nasal cavities, where you get the m, n, and especially the ing, as in ring comes right up in these nasal cavities. So for this course, we're going to be looking at those seven main organs of articulation. If you want to go into it deeper, you can Google organs of articulation and you'll find that bust of a human head and it will go all the way down here and it will have many more names. But for our course, that's not that important. There is no exam. There's only you speaking better. Now, I said at the beginning of this module that the main difference between the way in which we make vowels and the way in which we make consonants is the airflow. Vowels are unobstructed airflow. If you said unobstructed, pat yourself on the back. Consonants are made by blocking the airflow. So we're going to look at five, four main topics. Now, again, if you were studying to be a linguist, we could break this down into many, many components. But let's keep it simple, shall we? The first sound that I or uh, category that I want you to know in airflow, we're going to call it the stop consonant sounds. And these are the sounds where the air is completely blocked or stopped for a moment and then followed by a small explosion, such as, B, as in boy, and p, as in pat, and t, as in tom, and d, as in dog, and k, as in cat, and g, as in gate. If you feel it, we stop the air, g, and then we let it go. B, it's called a stop. Plosive. It's fall, it starts with a stop of air, and then we allow that air to explode slightly. Those, we're just going to call those stop sounds. Then we have the fricative sounds, which sound very much like the way they're supposed to mean they make friction, like the th as in faint, or the v as in Vancouver, or the th as in bath, or the th as in bathe. Hmm. We'll talk about that difference in a moment. And the s as in sister. And the z as in zoo. And the sh as in shoe. And the zh as in beige. And the r as in red. And the h as in hello. Those are called fricatives because we, we create, we stop the flow of air by creating friction. Perhaps the best example of that is the f and the v. We use the top front teeth. We press lightly on the bottom lip. And if it's voiced, it's mm -hmm. And if it's voiceless, it's But it is the teeth 
resting on the bottom teeth that causes the blockage of air and we create friction and those are called the fricative sounds. And now we have the continuants, which are very easy to remember. These are the consonant sounds that can carry on for as long as you can maintain your breath. And then finally, we're going to look at glides. Now, glides, there are only two of them, Y and W. Now, if you remember in the very, very first module on vowels, we talked about how Y and W are sometimes, well, they're helper vowels, but they're often, they're classified as semi-vowels. You see, they're semi-vowels and they are called glides. Glides are the only sound, the only consonant sound in the English language where there is no interruption of the flow of air. Rather, the sound goes from one sound as in y, and now let's take the word you, we go from y and we glide down to you. Can you hear that glide? You. Same with who or will. We start in one position and then we just glide. Gliding in English is very important to get this feeling of gliding. We glide a lot. We glide sounds together. We glide off consonants and our vowels will glide according to the length of the consonant. Now this is going to come up repeatedly over the course that you're studying. Now, I've sent you already a phonetic key to pronouncing consonants. And if you don't have this phonetic key, you should just simply email me at patty at communicatesuccess.com and I'll send you a copy of this phonetic key, okay? If you don't have it in front of you, it doesn't matter. It, you'll still be able to understand what I'm talking about. I want you to repeat after me the sounds, okay? And then we're going to go into them a little bit more in detail. And then I'm going to send you on your way to get some practicing done, okay? So let's start with the stops. P, as in past. And pepper. Let me hear you repeat that, please. P, p. I don't want to make it voiced. P, as in past. And pepper. And compare that now to B, as in better, and number. If you look at my face, you see the lips are doing the very same thing for P and B. B, as in better, and number. Repeat that, please. B, as in better, and number. And compare that to the silent, or the whispered, or the voiceless as in past and pepper. Those are called cognates. And I'm going to teach you these vowel sounds in cognates, meaning I'm going to teach you the voiceless sound and then its voiced cognate or voiced relative. So we could see that say that B, B, is the voiced cognate of P. Now let's look at the voiceless T, as in time. Or missed. Notice where is the tip of your tongue. T. It should be pressing slightly just be on that little ridge just behind the top front teeth and you hold it in a stop and then explode it. T. But it's voiceless, no vibration. T. As in time and missed. Repeat that. T. As in time and missed. Beautiful. Really feel that tongue. And now notice, put your throat here. Put your hand on your throat and make the d. D. Make the t. D. T. D. You can really feel in the d all of these muscles in here helping make that voice sound. D as in day and made. Repeat that, please. D as in day and made. Beautiful, beautiful. Now let's look at the cognates, stop plosives, k and g. Which one of those, dear student, is voiceless? K or the 
k. If you said k as in kite is voiceless, you are 100% correct. And the g as in give is voiced. Repeat after me. K as in king. Kite. Very nice. And g as in give and jig. G voiced. Glottal stop. Now, let's move on to some fricative, shall we? And let's look at some sounds that are quite complicated for many of you. So I want to start with this sound because I want you to pay very close attention to the TH sounds. The first one, now look at the tongue. As in thing. Repeat that, please. Put the tongue right between. Gently. Don't bite the tongue, please. Don't bite the tongue. But put the tongue very gently between the teeth. Stick your tongue out. And then make some friction, because it's a fricative. And hold it. Thing. I want you to practice this sound over and over, dear student, because if you were working on accentuate the beat, there's about a 98% chance this is a difficult sound for you. Repeat it again, please. As in thing, and I'm exaggerating, thing. Practice a lot. Now, compare this to, put your hand here, the tongue is in the very same position. There's more tension because it's voiced. As in this, this. It's a fricative. Put that tip of the, put the tongue between the teeth and make the friction. And then say the word this. And bathe. Let's back up for a second and let me hear you say the word bath. Bath. And now bathe. Bathe. And just a little aside there, what happens to that letter A in bath? And what happens to it when we say bathe? We'll be talking about this later. That's a question for you to figure out. Very good. Voiced and voiceless TH. Very difficult sound for the vast majority of you. I implore you, practice that as much as you can. Now let's take a look at two other fricatives. And as in faint, figure, repeat that please, as in faint and figure, see my teeth right there resting gently on my bottom teeth and then I, I let the air go and I create friction, it's voiceless, it's whispered, faint, figure. Beautiful. Now, teeth in the same place. Nothing up front moves. Only these muscles in here get involved to voice it as in mm, very. Mm, Vancouver. Vancouver is a beautiful word to practice because it has the two of them. Mm, as in very. Mm, Vancouver. Now, if you're a speaker of Indian descent, this is a sound, and many European, like the Finnish accent as well, these are sounds that are difficult for you. You have to practice the F and the V. Many of you confuse the V with the W, which when you look at my face, it's impossible to confuse V with W. We'll be taking a look at that as we go through. Now, here are two sounds that I know all of you can make. As a matter of fact, many of you make these sounds too frequently, and that's the S and the Z. And many of you will say these sounds for the TH, I think. No. S as in C. S. C. Z. 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 Very good. Now you'll notice my face is changing, but that's for the that's for the vowel. Not I'm not changing anything when I make 
or mm, or s and z. I'm not changing anything. The vowel following that sound will change sometimes and make my face look different, but not the onset of the word. The consonant onset and their cognates are always the same. Now let's look at this sound. Shh, shh. You'll always know shh is voiceless because it's shh. And let's compare it to its voice. Zh. See, look at the lips are the same. Zh. Where's the tongue? Zh. The tip of the tongue is floating, not touching anything. The tension comes through here and the sides of the tongue. Shh. Zh. Zh. As in shoe. And zh, as in beige, beige, sh, as in shoe, and nation, and zh, as in leisure or leisure, whichever one you wish to say, leisure or leisure, it matters not. Now let's look at the sound that happens when we make the word church. I love this sound. Where's the tip of the tongue? It's so the same place where it was for the T. But then, instead of making the T, we make the sh. Ch. 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 As in church. And its voice cognate zh. As in judge. Zh. As in judge. Ch. Zh. Beautiful. Now these are sounds you all can make. Mmm, as in mother. Mmm, as in yummy. Mmm, and these are the nasals, and you should feel that in your face. Your tongue should be tickling. Mmm, as in yummy. Very good. Repeat that, please. And the mmm, as in mother. Beautiful. And what about n, n? See, with the M, both lips are involved. But with the N, the, the tongue goes up. It moves. N, as in no. And now. N, and you can hold that one. That's a continuant. Because you can hold that one and right until you run out of breath. And let's look at, let's go up higher into the nasal passage to make the ing, as in ring. Ring. Repeat that, please. Ing, as in ring. And going. And tongue. Say that word, please. Tongue. Can you feel yourself pushing that flow of air up in through the nasal passages? Ung. Tongue. Can you feel it? It's the tongue pushes that sound up so that it comes out through the, through the nasal passages. Now here's a sound that's very difficult for many of you, particularly of Japanese origin. The sounds R and L. Let's look at R first. This is a little bit vocalic, isn't it? Because the tongue isn't really touching anything. The lips are rounded. And there's a lot of tension. The tongue is kind of rounded. And it's tight. Er, red, bitter, er, er, really feel it in here and really feel it in the sides of your tongue, curling up, er, that's a very, if you feel it, it's tension in the tongue, and so if you can think of tightening and lengthening that tongue to help you get that sound, er, the L is lateral. The tongue goes wide. Whereas on the R, the tongue curls and goes forward. On the L, it's lateral and the tongue goes out between the sides of the teeth. L, lonely, barrel, L. It starts with the U sound. L, L. Can you feel it? L. These are more relaxed. That's quite more relaxed than R. L. There's some tension in the cheeks, but it's nowhere near. Er, the tongue is nowhere near as tight. So let me hear you say red and lonely. Lonely. Feel the tongue. 
concentrate on the movement of the tongue. If you have difficulty with these sounds, concentrate on the movement of the tongue. Finally, we have the as in heavy, always voiceless, heavy, always voiceless, always a breath of air coming across. Hi, hello, repeat that please. And finally, as I said before, we have the Y, the W, W, always followed by a complex vowel, U, 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 U. You, you, and now I'm sorry, the last sound I made as a W, calling it the, the Y, I really meant to say the Y is pronounced Y, you, and the W is W. I want you to practice the difference between Y, W, Y, W. Don't be afraid to get a mirror and watch yourself. Y, W, Y. Very, the difference is very slight. You, very slight. Now I want you to go ahead and practice this. This is a long unit. I realize that it's a half an hour. There are 24 sounds. That's not bad. You got to practice them a lot, and I want you to notice the difference between them. In the next unit, we're going to look just briefly at some of the more difficult sounds, and then. After that, we're going to get going really on the whole intonation rhythm patterns of the English language. So get yourself to work, and I'll see you soon on the other side. Bye now.